Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss the currently available evidence to support the role of oxygen therapy or normobaric oxygen therapy in the management of selected acute and chronic wounds. My name is Gregory Weir and I'm a vascular surgeon, wound care specialist and hyperbaric physician from Pretoria, South Africa. I'm also a proud member of the Wound Healing Association of Southern Africa. The first principal approach to a daunting problem, as suggested by Elon Musk, include the following. Identify and define your current assumptions. Break down the problem into its fundamental components and create new solutions from scratch. A lot of the work has already been done by the giants who lead us in the field of wound care. Gary Sybil's wound bed preparation paradigm is an essential tool for breaking down the problem in this case the chronic wound, into its fundamental components. At its essence, the patient is always the most important fundamental component. Patient comorbidities should be identified and addressed as soon as possible. Patient and family concerns should be addressed from the onset with the help of an intensive health dialogue. The cause of the wound should be identified and treated expeditiously. The patient, the wound and patient logistics should be ascertained to determine the ability of the wound to heal for this specific patient, given all the parameters that apply to this individual. Local wound factors should be addressed, including removal of necrotic tissue, infection control, moisture control. All of this should lead to wound edge advancement while maintaining a healthy surrounding skin. Controlling environmental factors that might impact on the patient should also be considered. External factors could lead to repeated injury and compromise the patient's ability to heal. Extremes of temperature should be avoided. Pollution might impact on the patient with underlying respiratory com comorbidities. Organizational factors should conform to patient requirements. What does the patient want? Patient and family-centered concerns include what the patient and the patient's direct circle of care want in the short and long term. The patient with an acute or chronic wound wants to, the wound to heal as soon as possible to allow them to continue with their lives. During the process of wound healing, they want to maintain quality of life with the minimum amount of pain, the least number of interventions, the least number of dressing changes, and the minimum cost. They want their fears to be allayed by a competent team of healthcare practitioners. Fears regarding infection, risk of amputation, and risk of malignancy must be addressed with the appropriate dose of empathy. During the whole process, they want to maintain dignity and maintain autonomy at all times. But what does the wound need? Research would indicate that a wound would require adequate supply of oxygen and other nutrients through an intact, unimpeded circulation. The wound bed will require preparation and maintenance through debris control, infection control, moisture control, which should lead to edge advancement. At this point, the wound edge and surrounding skin should be protected by controlling the local wound environment. The current assumption is that oxygen is an essential nutrient in wound healing. Research has established this as a basic principle. The absence of oxygen, also known as hypoxemia or tissue hypoxia, delays wound healing. Hyperoxia or hyperoxemia promotes wound healing, enhances white cell activity, and reduces edema. But how much oxygen is required? How much oxygen does the patient need to maintain systemic requirements to avoid hypoxemia? How much oxygen is required by the wound to avoid local tissue hypoxia? The patient's whole body will attempt to maintain homeostasis in an attempt to avoid damage to the vital organs sometimes to the detriment of the oxygen delivery to the skin. Low hemoglobin levels and obstruction of a large artery and significant lung disease could lead to anemic ischemic or hypoxic hypoxia. Supplemental normobaric oxygen could be of use to support the patient while the anemia is corrected, while the arterial supply is reconstructed, or while the reversible respiratory problem is treated. If these problems cannot be corrected, the patient might not require long-term normobaric oxygen therapy. But if such a patient develops a wound on an extremity, short-term normobaric oxygen therapy could improve tissue oxygen levels enough 
to allow wound healing. Local wound factors that would increase oxygen requirements include a large wound size, a location distant from the heart, local infection, increased exudate and edema. Many of these factors could be addressed by appropriate local wound management. Antimicrobial dressings, for instance, or systemic antibiotics will control the infection. Elevating the limb or application of compression bandages should control edema. Absorbent foam dressings and compression bandages should control the exudate. Oxygen saturation is the fraction of oxygen saturated hemoglobin relative to the total hemoglobin in the blood. The human body requires and regulates a very precise and specific balance of oxygen in the blood. Normal arterial blood oxygen saturation levels in humans are between 95 and 100 percent. Finger oximeters have become readily available during the COVID pandemic. These devices are very useful to identify low saturation levels in patients with chronic wounds. The use of normal baric oxygen could be tailored to the individual requirements. Care should be taken to avoid high saturation levels in patients with chronic obstructive airway disease or emphysema. Ideally, you should be aiming at a saturation of between 88 and 92 percent. High saturation levels might induce hypercapnia and by suppressing the patient's respiratory drive could cause problems. The same care should be taken in patients with cystic fibrosis, neuromuscular disorders, chest wall disorders and morbid obesity. In the absence of respiratory failure, saturation levels of 98% should be the aim. Oxygen therapy should therefore be titrated so that the saturation is within a specific range that avoids risk for the specific patient. Transcutaneous oxygen pressure measures the amount of oxygen that diffuses through the skin in an area adjacent to, to an ulcer. The test is non-invasive, relatively inexpensive, highly repeatable and has a higher positive predictive value than ankle brachial pressure indices or toe brachial pressure. The sensitivity and specificity for TCPO2 were 85 and 92% respectively when a cutoff level of 25 mm mercury was used for determination of outcome of ulcer healing in diabetic foot ulcers. This graph depicts the estimated probability of healing with TCPO2 levels. A TCPO2 of 20 mm mercury should be sufficient to maintain skin integrity. Tissue hypoxia is defined as a TCPO2 of less than 40 mm mercury. Patients with critical limb ischemia will have TCPO2 levels of less than 30 mm mercury. A TCPO2 of more than 30 mm mercury is required for a wound to heal in a non diabetic patient. A TCPO2 of more than 40 mm mercury is required for a wound to heal in a diabetic patient. In patients without vascular disease, TCPO2 values on the extremities increase to a value of more than 100 mm mercury when breathing 100% oxygen under normal baric pressures. After revascularization, an increase in TCPO2 to more than 40 mm mercury during normal baric air breathing is usually associated with subsequent wound healing. It is important to note that low TCPO2 values obtained while breathing normal baric air can be caused by a diffusion barrier like edema. Edema is the enemy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is the use of 100% oxygen at atmospheric pressures exceeding two atmospheres absolute. This well-established treatment modality has been abused to treat anything from acne to zygomycosis. The internationally accepted wound indications for the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy is listed, as well as the type of recommendation and the level of evidence. Necrotizing soft tissue infections, for instance, have a type 1 recommendation with level C evidence. The mechanisms of action of hyperbaric oxygen therapy include hyperoxia, edema reduction, enhanced white cell function, and modulation of inflammatory response, as well as new vascularization. The potential risks of hyperbaric oxygen therapy are very low, but not negligible. There are various barriers to access hyperbaric oxygen therapy, 
of which cost is probably the most significant. Oxygen therapy appears to be set aside for patients with chronic lung problems. Clinicians are fascinated by hyperbaric oxygen therapy, topical oxygen therapy, and continuously diffused oxygen. Standard oxygen therapy or non-barbaric oxygen appears to be neglected by most wound care specialists. Delivery of oxygen is equal to the product of cardiac output multiplied with the oxygen content of arterial blood. Cardiac output is equal to the heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. The oxygen content of arterial blood is equal to the saturation of blood multiplied by the hemoglobin multiplied by a factor of 1.34 added to the product of the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries multiplied by a factor of 0 0.003. Another way of putting it is that the oxygen content is equal to the dissolved oxygen and the hemoglobin bound oxygen. The factors that impact oxygen delivery that will be discussed further include the patient's saturation, hemoglobin and partial arterial oxygen pressure. Under normal conditions, a patient without anemia will have oxygen delivery of close to a litre per minute. A patient with significant anemia of 7.5 grams per deciliter will only have half the oxygen delivered to the tissue. By temporarily giving the patient supplemental normobaric oxygen, oxygen delivery will be improved. However, by transfusing the patient or correcting the anemia, oxygen delivery will nearly double. Remember to treat the patient as a whole. If a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease has a saturation of 80% on room air, supplemental oxygen aimed at increasing the saturation to 90% will increase his oxygen delivery from 814 to 924 milliliters per minute. Care must be taken not to exceed a saturation of 92% due to the risk of hypercapnia. Normal barrack oxygen therapy increases oxygen delivery in an otherwise normal patient by 62 mls per minute. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy increases the amount of oxygen dissolved in the blood plasma significantly. Partial arterial oxygen pressures can reach 2280 millimeters mercury. Oxygen delivery is increased by 358 milliliters per minute. The reason why normal barrack oxygen can contribute to wound healing is based on the correction of tissue hypoxia, reduction of edema, and modulation of the inflammatory response, to name a few. Some of the risks associated with normobaric oxygen are listed on this slide. Take note that oxygen and smoking do not go together. Facial burns are one of the most common complications of home oxygen therapy. Hypercapnia is the result of prolonged use of oxygen with saturation in excess of 92%. This can be avoided by adjusting the oxygen flow to maintain saturation between 88 and 91 percent. Fortunately, the risk of central nervous system and pulmonary oxygen toxicity is relatively low. Systemic indications or comorbid conditions that could benefit from normal barrack oxygen therapy include respiratory failure with low saturation and low partial arterial oxygen pressures. Chronic anemia patients might benefit from temporary oxygen therapy while the cause is corrected. In patients with arterial insufficiency awaiting surgery, temporary normal barrack oxygen therapy might ameliorate tissue ischemia until the arterial reconstruction has been done. A prescription needs to include the saturation goal and treatment duration. Care should be taken not to initiate normal barrack oxygen therapy for a patient with a non-healable ulcer. It will only increase the cost of treatment. Local indicators that would point towards a favorable outcome with the use of normal barrack oxygen therapy include room air TCPO2 of 30 mm mercury, especially if the value increases on administration of oxygen. Please remember that edema is the most significant contributor to false low TCPO2 values. When in doubt, elevate the patient's limb and repeat when the edema has subsided. The obvious advantages of normal barrack oxygen therapy is 
especially if compared with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, include significantly decreased cost, a significant increase in the available oxygen concentrators due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, fewer side effects and risks, the convenience of home treatment, and less dependence on other expensive resources. I was surprised by the lack of evidence to support normal baric oxygen therapy in patients with acute or chronic wounds. In my opinion, it is a definite research opportunity. Normal baric oxygen therapy might be compared with topical oxygen therapy and even hyperbaric oxygen therapy. A select group of patients with acute and chronic wounds will benefit from the use of normal baric oxygen therapy. Systemic patient factors and local wound factors should be taken into consideration to determine whether a patient will benefit or not. While we are treating the patient by correcting anemia, treating reversible respiratory problems and correcting arterial insufficiency, normal baric oxygen can be used to reduce tissue hypoxia as a temporary measure. As soon as these systemic factors have been corrected, oxygen therapy could be discontinued. The positive predictive value of TCPO2 on room air has been well established. The response of TCPO2 to oxygen administration might prove to be of value in determining which patients with wounds will benefit from normal baric oxygen therapy. Thank you very much.